Okay, good afternoon. Today is May 22nd, Wednesday. The market's just closed. Let's take a look and see what's going on here in the market. This is Brian Shannon speaking from Alpha Trends. And today we had a pretty constructive day, I thought. We had a huge volume in these queues. Take a look at this volume. It's the biggest we've had since the market declined. And while I was looking on this weekly time frame for a potential sell-off down towards about $37.30, I got that level off of this trend line that I'm about to draw in right now, as well as the lows from last October. I believe it was October, yeah. And that comes in at about 37 and a quarter or so. And I was thinking, well, if the market keeps selling off here, let's look for downside potential. Keyword there is potential. Support and resistance are always just potential levels, trend lines, or a potential area where we might have support or resistance, as is moving averages, Fibonacci, or any other technical indicator out there. Bottom line is we have to be responsive and look at what's going on within the market. Today, again, we had very big volume. The market closed positive here for the first time in a while after a nice shakeout that we saw in the morning, too. Let's take a look at the 10-minute chart. You'll see that this, this five-day moving average is still declining. It's declined to about the $39 level. And I think if we can get above that five-day moving average and hold above there for maybe a half hour or an hour or something like that, we could see this market really uh, get a nice pop up to the upside. The bears have, I think, overstayed their welcome. They've really driven this market down lower, and I think it's time for a snapback rally. We'll see if we can get that, but it, it certainly appears as though that's what's happening here. Earlier today, um, I want to look at a two-minute time uh, chart here. Let's just change the scaling so I can uh, snap this to the window. By the way, all these charts are brought to you by Realtick. Check them out at www.realtick.com. Here's what I saw, and this is when I got long some cues today. The market made this lower low right in here. It did so with less volume than it did on the first try over here from yesterday afternoon and this morning. That's encouraging to me because it means there's less, less emotion in the market. Volume represents really emotion in the market. So there's less volume, less emotion. People aren't as frightened. There's not as much throwing away of stocks the way we saw yesterday afternoon. The market rallied up, found a little resistance at that downtrend line, and then came down to that came down, made a higher low right in here. So we have one low, and then we have another low right here that's a little bit higher. So higher highs and higher lows. Here's where I think the market really turned, and that's where I got long in here. Uh, by the way, Charles Kirk from the Kirk Report made a great call um, right around actually probably about half hour before the market actually turned. Uh, if you haven't seen his site, kirkreport.com, check the right-hand side of my blog. It's got a link over there. He's got a, links to a lot of great uh, financial information as well as providing some insightful research himself. Um, so take a look at the Kirk Report. Anyways, back to this market here, you'll see that when, when I go to a one-minute chart, I've been talking a little bit lately about the VWAP, the Volume Weighted Average Price, and that's where we saw the market really gain hold too, is getting back above that VWAP. So bottom line is that it looks like the market is starting to turn, and I, I think we've got some conviction here this time because we've got big volume in it. Of course, the environment remains very risky, so don't go nuts on the upside and forget your stops, but there's a lot of oversold stocks, and looks like they're starting to bounce. But today, you know, provided it was a great day as far as volatility goes. I quoted George Soros this morning as far as volatility peaks at turning points and diminishes with the trend. It, it kind of amuses me when I hear, uh, you know, the people on CNBC talking about the, the wild volatility in the market lately. It hasn't been volatile at all. It's been a nice orderly sell-off in here. And this sell-off has come, you know, slow and steady. Today, though, we had volatility. We had up and down moves. That's what volatility means, and that's what we have at turning points. Volatility comes with big emotion and people repositioning long to short to long, long to short, that sort of thing. So what we have here, I think, is an emotional turning point and something that we're going to see some upside continuation with. Avicii, I mentioned on the long side, stock still can't get above that resistance here. I'm not thrilled about it. Bid you. Also, was a stock I liked. It still holds above that 10-day moving average and starting to get some legs there into the afternoon, CTXS. 
Looked like a, a, a nice open here this morning. Well, actually, it opened way lower. Rallied up. Looked like it was going to follow through, but failed again. We'll take a look more at more stocks a little bit later, um, as I will do another video, because I think there's going to be a lot better opportunities. Uh, Lattice Semi still hadn't gotten above that 580 level. Um, what I'd mentioned also this morning was, you know, on, on the short side, the way I like to sell short, I don't like to sell short on strength. Just as like I don't like to buy on weakness. If I had been buying on weakness over the last two weeks, I'd be getting murdered. What I want to do is look to sell short on strength. And I had mentioned earlier how in SanDisk in particular, we were looking for a bounce up to 60 yesterday to get short. Well, as the market's rallying up to 60, my opinion is that it would be foolish to sell short. Let's just change the scaling here. Because the market, you know, the, the trend is higher at that point to sell short up there. Instead, once the market starts turning lower, and then it got below that one-day VWAP right there, you can see that from that level, the sellers took control, and there was a real nice drop right down to the daily R2 level. I'm sorry, S2, not R2. Uh, sell was another stock I was looking for as a break below. Uh, you can see that the sellers did take control there, but weren't able to hold on to that control of the, of the market. There were a couple other stocks I had mentioned. Um, one was, uh, let's see, Avid Technologies, which finally broke below that 38 level. But you know what? That's what stops are for. There's no excuse to still be holding the stock short. Worst case stop in this position should have been right there. Not above the prior day's high. Why would you risk a dollar in a stock when the whole market's rallying? Once you see that market start to rally, you've got to adjust your thinking, adjust your stops, and preserve capital. That's the name of the game here until you have a better opportunity. ESRX did get the bounce we were looking for, and this one sold off pretty nicely um, as it started breaking back down again. So, that's going to wrap it up here because I don't have time for more. I will be back this afternoon with more ideas. Thanks for visiting my blog. Again, this is Brian Shannon at Alpha Trends Blogspot. Today is Wednesday, May 23rd, and I will be back this evening with more ideas. Thank you.